papers this morning, as you can imagine, they're Sunday newspapers, they're always big and thick, but they're real sort of commemorative editions today. With us is Kevin Woodford, broadcaster and super chef, and Claire Pearson, who's former Conservative advisor. So here we are starting with Kevin. Yes, how things are changing for stay-at-home students? Yeah, I mean, I, it's to do with the Open University, uh, and I'm a great fan of the Open University. I think it's a, I used to be in education, I used to be, you know, involved in, it, in higher education. And Open University was always a very, very important element for people's lives that weren't able to get to university. A lot of them were mature students, you know, that had missed out in the, in the uh, younger years, and then found that they could get to university at a later stage in their lives. That's changing dramatically, and it's changing dramatically because of the cost of living crisis. Mm. So, um, from, from a recent poll, there's a 70% 17, 17 increase in the 18 to 19 year olds actually opting to study from home through the university. And that's purely because of the cost of living. It's right. a lot cheaper, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Much cheaper indeed. Do you get an honours degree or just a degree at the end of it? I don't know. Oh, no, no, you can go through the whole, the whole gambit of, of, uh, of degrees with the Open University now. I mean, you can go on residential courses and everything now, can't okay. you? Well, you do. I mean, I think you can come out with a very fancy degree. Oh, absolutely. No, absolutely. You can come out with a really good degree from Invented the Open University. Invented by Harold Wilson's government? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. It was. So that came into, uh, into life when the Queen was... Uh, Correct. Allegedly with her favourite Prime Minister. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, really? Is yeah. that what they said? Yeah. So you got, they got on it surprisingly well. You liked them, didn't you? Yeah, she liked them very she much, is. apparently. She did. Mm. Um, Actually, where, where is it? Claire, you've put this in. I'm moving the order about here, but it just seemed to tie in beautifully. It's in the Observer, looking at the, the 15 Prime Ministers that the Queen had. And I, I just find this fascinating. And being in politics myself, I've seen a number of Prime Ministers, especially over the last few years. We've been through a couple. Uh, but 15 of them. Can we name them? Everybody, oh, at, home, oh, everybody at home join like in. Game right. show. Obviously, it's Churchill. Yes. Then Macmillan? Uh, Eden. Oh, Ooh, of course. How could you miss out? Eden. And, and then, then Macmillan. Then I get really, really, really stuck. Um, um, you, uh, Douglas Hume. Douglas Hume. Hume Wilson. Wilson. Callaghan. Where's Heath? After Wilson. Uh, oh. So Heath and then... What? Hang on. Heath, then Heath, Callaghan. Heath, Callaghan, Heath, Callaghan, Thatcher. Thatcher. Oh, then it gets easier. Then, then, it, then it should get easier. <laughs> then then Blair. Blair, Major, you have Major, 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 Major Blair, 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 Brown, Brown, Brown Cameron, 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 May, May Johnson, May. Truss. Truss. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> we did quite well. We did quite what well. What did you do at home? It's quite difficult, wasn't it? This is a little, this is a little quiz for uh, a Sunday morning. But I just find it fascinating that the Queen is the one person who can take the confidences of a Prime Minister and will never leak those out to mm. anybody. Mm. So she can be used as a sounding board for advice, for guidance for somebody just to go and have a good old moan at and she will either offer that sort of soft advice and be very gentle or she will be a little bit more robust from what I understand but of course we will never find out the content of these conversations and I just think for politics to have that one person who is yeah. never going to leave and will never give you a party political version of something. Was it Liz Truss or Theresa May who, meant, who said that in their speech? They actually said that they had spoken to the Queen and they were quite relieved to be able to do so because it was the one conversation they knew would never be leaked. I, I think that it, may well have been Johnson who said that. No, it was, was one of the it, women. It, it, it was either Liz uh, Truss or... Well, it must have, surely that must have been, it must have been Theresa May, though. It must have been Theresa yeah, May. it must have been Theresa yeah. And so if you think of the time when Theresa May was Prime Minister, all that was going on at that time with, mm. uh, with Brexit and elections going on she needed that she needed somebody to to give her that guide we'd love to know just what it was like inside this this conversation oh, wouldn't we desperate oh. to know absolutely mm. desperate i bet she could know. put you down oh if you got too uppity she'd probably be able to put you down just but like there was that, that whole thing between her and thatcher wasn't it there was a real yeah. sort of you know, they didn't get on that well no they, they? didn't no, no, they, no, they no. didn't real tension apparently yeah. yeah but of course the queen would never say anything and uh, Margaret Thatcher also wouldn't and, it, and it's that one relationship I think that has endured and in politics relationships break down constantly and you see it in the House of Commons all of the time across the years it's not something that's uh, no, it's just for new. now no. it's not new but this is the one relationship which has remained constant and I just find it absolutely fascinating that she has seen that many prime ministers and when you look back at all the different times going from 
Second World War, you have going through the Falklands War, you've got Afghanistan, Syria, all of those conflicts that she's seen, and everything in between. And of course, the one really difficult time, just to pick one, uh, with Tony Blair's time in 97, with Princess Diana and her untimely death, and that's when you saw a rift between the palace and government, because Tony Blair went out with the people's princess, and the palace were just behind. Uh. And that brought in that huge rift, and it's taken a few years now to, to bring that back. And I, do, you know, I think that was a really important time for everybody to learn how... To reassess a little And bit. reassess, but also yeah. to learn how the royalty deal with politics and how politics deals with royalty. But you see, that's one thing which, which we will miss to an extent. But although Charles, of course, has been an apprentice for a very long time <laughs> now, yeah. and has... You know, he knows he's across things, and I should imagine over the recent years as, as much as his mother was. Um, but of course, what what they were relying on, not quite what it was like in the early days, I don't know. But was her experience? You know, it's her experience of all these things, which you know, they, nobody else in politics has got. They haven't got the experience over all those decades. That and, she and isn't it interesting as well that there's there's two new characters mm. in play at the moment? We've got Liz Truss as prime minister, and we've got and King think? Charles. Mm. Fascinating times. Oh, it is. They get to learn together. together. I just think, you know, they've, yeah. they've started their new so, jobs in the same week. We've never seen this before. No. So have no. a new monarch and a new prime minister. In the same week. Yeah, you're quite right. They start their job in the same week. So I hope that that brings a closer relationship mm. because, I mean, these, these are quite awesome jobs to have for, for the pair of them yeah. in a country which is facing some really, really tough times. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how this develops. Yeah. Um, Kevin, looking at the Queen... Camilla mm. in the Mail on Sunday. Yeah, I mean she's she's credit to her. I mean, she she quietly gets on with a very serious role that she's interested in, which is you know abuse. She's she's particularly interested in in domestic abuse, mm. um, and, and one can only really sort of you know give full credit for that. Um, and, and, and she's practically involved in it as well, Stephen, which I think is really important. I mean, in 2016. She actually broke down in tears after after, after meeting uh, a lady, and she pledged that I had a problem, and she pledged to do anything that she could to raise the issue of domestic abuse. Mm. Um, and one thinks that there are lots of things that she could get involved in, which are clean and nice and you know and tidy, but she's chosen to deal with something that is close to her heart, you know. And again, credit to her. You know, she spoke at a, a woman's refuge in, in Reading last year. And, she, and she, re, she, she, she said at that particular time that she'd met lots of people that had had um, abuse from, from their partners. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what really inspired her to get involved. So I think we're going to find her becoming the queen of, 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 uh, of, of those that are really in need of support. Isn't it interesting that, I mean, they are royal and there's, they're, you know, they're, they are different to us, but they are, Camilla particularly, but Charles as well that have got a common touch somehow, um, which I think is is very it's different. It's different from from Queen Elizabeth in a way, but I think it's a really positive move now as as the monarchy evolves. I never used to feel that, you know. I mean, I think it's just more latterly that you know we've seen more of Charles becoming. Well, when you think evolved. about it, he's led an extraordinary life because obviously, obviously, he's been eclipsed by his mother in any anything to do with matters of state. He was eclipsed by his mother. When it came to the public persona, he was eclipsed by Diana for many years. Yeah. Um, and we've, uh, it, this is our first chance to actually get to know him sure. uh, because suddenly he is now the most important figure in, in the land, in the monarchy. And um, maybe we'll get to know him properly because maybe we've never had a chance to before. Well, we haven't, and have we? No. That's the whole point. He, he has been in the wings. I mean, yes. it's a bizarre role in that sense, isn't it? You know. Um, and one thinks now of his age, and we've got um, the Prince of Wales, William. Well, I was going to say, he's even been eclipsed to a certain extent by his own son. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. So he had his mother at one point, yeah. the Queen, and he, and he had this young prince who, mm -hmm. who everybody absolutely adored. This is uh. the first time it's it's just about him we're talking. We yeah. And see how he develops. Mm -hmm. But isn't it funny? He's come into his own. I think he has. He has. I think. I was having a, a conversation with uh, friends of mine yesterday, and they said for a man who had watched his mother pass away to then have to come and address the nation suddenly he seemed to 
grow into that position. Mm. He suddenly seemed to be had the broader shoulders and become somebody different and sort of turn into the king that... that and you know, those who know him probably understood that he was always going to do that, but the rest of for us, we and hadn't I, known him. Absolutely, and I thought, you know, it was absolutely fascinating to watch that and to, to watch his speech and think, you know, I couldn't have done that. When I lost my mother, I could never have stood up the following day. Uh, you want to hide away, yeah. don't you? There's several weeks that probably couldn't have done it. But for him to do that to the nation in such a beautiful way, I think just shows the mettle of the man. And I think you're right. I think we will get to know what his character yes. is because we've never been given that opportunity previously. Yeah, we'll get to know the strength of his I character. Tell you, I don't know if you noticed, but he's wearing a tie pin. Yes. A diamond tie pin there, which has got his CR on it. Uh. There was a close-up in one of the papers uh, that I saw online last night. And you sort of wonder, that must have been designed for a long time. Um, you wouldn't have to quite well, it must have been on standby for, for a long time. But it's, it, it was very, I found it quite moving just to see his, his sort of little crest and what, you know, what will appear on the new post boxes and That's right, the new insignia. Sort of the new insignia. Yeah. Yeah. And just it would have all been, you know, planned yonks ago, wouldn't it? And, and suddenly brought out. I, thought, I, I just thought it was nice to see. And, and actually to know that the Queen will have seen that. Oh, yeah. You know, she'll have been aware of that. All these things, in some respects, if it was if it was also would seem distasteful. Yeah, but, but she's been brought them. up to believe in the passing on mm. of, of the monarchy. And I think that's quite refreshing that we're not in this country particularly good at dealing or talking about death and what yeah. happens, whereas the royal family actually are very, very practical because they know the job to has to continue. <laughs> so they have all of these conversations quite openly. And maybe that's something that we can all learn because I think it's very much closed doors and we yes. don't like to talk about it. But this seems to be a little bit much, a little bit more healthy, perhaps. I think so. I do think so. That's also amazing that the power of the comfort of faith and there's no doubt she believed, absolutely Luke, believed. Uh, and by the sound of it, the way Charles, Charles does talking, too, I think yeah. he does too. Yeah. And that must be, at this sort of moment, it must be terrifically comforting to believe. It must, and I, I always feel, that I, I've never been that sort of, I don't have that level of faith, I suppose. No, nor do I, and I, I think it's a shame in a way. I, I do as well, and I, I, I you start to look and think, oh, well, mm. maybe, maybe I should perhaps look mm. at this, maybe I should mm. understand a bit more, because they have that, and if that brings them extra comfort, that's only got to be a good thing. Mm. The strength and comfort that it seems to bring. Maybe yes, well, to... maybe this. Oh, yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. It's a very a suitable conversation for a Sunday morning, isn't it? George says, The sad death of the late Queen Elizabeth and the proclamation of King Charles brought back memories of my childhood. I was nine years old when my mother and grandparents took me to the lying state of King George. Must be the fifth, not the fourth. Yeah, that's what the thing. Little was I to know that then, some 25 years later, I would meet the now king while serving in the Royal Air Force. I was in charge of the ground engineer team that had to prepare the Harrier T-4 aircraft for the then Prince Charles, if you remember, to fly familiarisation sorties in the Harrier. Yes, we forget that he was a pilot like that. The preparation of the aircraft took several weeks and the team, including myself, logged quite a number of backseat flying hours in the Harrier, which was an unforgettable experience in itself. Before and after the flights I presented my team to him and we were all immediately put at ease by his casual approach and his enthusiasm and joy having flown in such an iconic aircraft. I and my wife later met the Queen and Prince Charles at a Buckingham Palace garden party in 94. I enjoyed a fantastic career of 39 years highlighted by many magic moments travelling the world and had the honour to serve with many many loyal service men and women of the armed forces all of which must be very all of whom must be very sad and mourning the loss of their beloved queen. Yeah. That's beautiful. You forget that actually he did go, you know, he yeah. did go quite a lot. Yeah. A lot of people were quite worried. <laughs> well, yeah. I seem to remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, look, we've got to leave it there, you two, but it's been really good to see you both this morning. Thank you Thank very you much. So much yeah. Thank you very much. Go away and make a really Marmalade. good yeah. Marmalade. Yeah. Marmalade. Yeah, some sort of Marmalade and toast. Marmalade and toast. And toast. Yes. Oh, and talking of toast, I read in one of the newspapers today what how ingrained it is that we honour the Queen, and the Queen has always been, and it's very difficult to say, how many of us have ever raised a toast at some dinner or do or something, mm. and said, to the Queen? It would be very different now, yes. when you raise your yeah. wine glass later on today, yeah. maybe, uh, you know, and you, it'll be to the King, yeah. the toast will be to the King. Yeah, well, yeah. It will be, won't it?
It's always a rise for the Queen, wasn't it? It was. Get up at your yeah. dinner it's table. It's going to take some time, actually. It will take a long time. Now, it? it will, but I'm quite looking forward to it, yeah. in a way. I, quite, I, I, I feel he deserves it, and I feel... I feel I feel a strange sense of loyalty. To Me them. too. Yeah, Isn't that funny? I do as well. Mm. And, and sort of almost excitement that we. A, a new him. era. Yeah, yeah, we've got him there. I think I to live through this is is incredible that we've actually yeah. experienced history in the oh, making. Yeah. Absolutely, you feel um, it at the moment as you're sad and everything else, but yeah. you do feel it. So you're experiencing history. And especially for Liz Truss. Actually, Liz Truss yeah. oh. going to the Queen and then. All of a sudden, she's dealing with the king. Yeah. That's quite remarkable. Um, Angela says, morning, Angela, said we should look at the Queen's funeral as a national day of mourning, not a bank holiday. I, I understand I what you mean. I, it's yeah. not a holiday. It's a commemorative day, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. But it's called a bank holiday because the banks are off. They're not 